Hello everyone, I'm Lucy Fanger, CEO of On Technology Partners, and I'm proud to be sponsoring our new program, Women Stars. In each episode, we will spotlight an amazing woman and the struggles and triumphs that she has faced. Then we will reflect and share her insights. Our goal is to engage, entertain, and explore the women stars in our world today. I hope you enjoy. I want to thank you all for listening today. My name is Shanti Harkness, and I'm the media manager for On Technology Partners, a woman-owned company addressing cybersecurity and risk. Join us as we share the reflections of women just like you that have survived struggles and embraced triumphs in their lives. Today, we'll be talking with Kiana McIntosh Barnes. Kiana is a native of our nation's capital, a mother of six, and a wife to Markel Farms. She is the president of Celebrate Your Worth, an organization with a focus on breaking the new age cycles of disrespect to ladies and a dedication to reminding women of their importance. She's also involved with various groups and boards who work tirelessly to uplift our communities. Kiana is an alumni of Brookstone and Lorain County Community Colleges, where she encompasses an aspiration and understanding that most deem incomparable. Employed with Lorain County Community College for 12 years, now as the student services navigator, this exemplifies how she enjoys impacting and elevating the lives of our youth. Although she looks forward to one day obtaining her Master's of Business Administration, and her experience spans over 25 years from corporate America to nonprofit organizations, her passion in sharing her skills and talents is priceless. Kiana likes to say that we all have a story to tell, and she chooses to tell hers with a smile. Kiana, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today. Oh my, yes, thank you for having me. Having, just made me sound so great. <laughs> <laughs> so before we dive into, you know, the base of our, our questions, tell us a little bit about something that others may not know about you or something exciting about yourself. Well, well thank you for the opportunity. I think that uh, one of the things I, I typically share when, um, when that question is asked is that once upon a time, I was two tenths of a second behind Florence Griffith Joyner. For those who may or may not know who that is, she was known as Flo Jo in the Olympics and she held the 100 meter dash um, record for years and years. Literally, it was just broken this year by a young lady from Jamaica. And so uh, in the 60 meter dash, which is a, a race that is, is ran indoors, it, um, I was two tenths of a second in the track and field magazine back when I, <laughs> back in high school. So I, I, I shared that because um, most people don't understand that and have no clue of that about me. So that's pretty exciting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's dive right in. So we know that triumphs don't come without their struggles, right? So talk to us a little bit about what some of your biggest struggles have been. This can be either professionally or personally. And talk to us about how you were able to get through that struggle and what kind of an impact it had on your life or career. Sure. So like most of us, we experience the pleasure of, you know, seeing and and witnessing people being born. And then on the opposite side, we also uh, unfortunately experience people passing away. In my life, it's no different. I unfortunately lost uh, my grandmother, um, who was very, very instrumental in my life at a young age, at 17. And from that, you know, she was the matriarch of our family. Um, And and I witnessed a, a number of other things transpire after that. Very grateful for my mom, for displaying the same type of strength and love that my grandmother did. So that helped me to prepare for what was to come as as an adult, right? And uh, being in the world. And what I love about this particular podcast is that there is a focus on women um, because women, unfortunately, just by being born, we become a minority. Uh, And then to put color in it, you become a double minority. And so the unfortunate, you know, um, 
results of that in a number of cases can be that you you witness discrimination in some type of form. And so for, for me, I unfortunately did witness those um, in terms of positions, um, in terms of, you know, academics. And I understand now that even though I started off in corporate America and the mindset was to make as much money as I possibly could, as young as I possibly could, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was laid off. I became a displaced worker. I found an opportunity to make myself more marketable. And that is what brought me, honestly, to where I am now with Lorain County Community College, where I found a totally new passion um, and wanted to give back in a way that I didn't necessarily receive when I initially started on my path, whether it was my collegiate path um, or my professional path, and, and try to remind individuals that look like me uh, that you can do it too. If, if I can do it and I can overcome the obstacles and things that society has out there for us, then you can do it too. And so um, that that's my spill on... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm mad for sure. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Did you have any tips or tricks or any kind of methods that you use to help you get through those challenging times? Yeah. So once upon a time, it used to be, you know, sweeping it under the rug, mm -hmm. uh, holding it in until it all bubbled up and had to come out in some type of way. I literally taught myself that it is important for individuals to understand that the only person that you can control is you, mm -hmm. right? And that if you allow others to predict your temperature or your attitude, then you are allowing them to control you. And that I cannot do, right? I cannot give anyone else that type of power over me. And so I learned very early that my, my anger triggers and turn them around, you know, like, yeah, I can, I can wallow in the facts of that racism still exists, that there are biases and there are things in the society, um, as stated, you know, being a double minority, I can wallow in all of that, or I can choose to soar despite of, and that is what I have chosen to do looking at things in a positive manner. You stated my quote, and, and I live by that, is that we all have a story to tell. And I just choose to focus on my the positive aspects, uh, recognizing that I wouldn't be who I am today had I not gone through some of the things that I did. Um, I wouldn't be able to relate to other beings that may be experiencing some, some things, you know, I am also the co-chair of the equity by design team at Lorain County Community College. I would not be able to uh, respectfully share strategies and, 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 and think through things to uh, uplift our entire community if I hadn't been through them myself. So although that is not the future that I want for my grandkids, right, <laughs> it is uh, necessary for us to overcome in order, you know, I tell people all the time, you don't have a testimony unless you have literally been through a test. So Absolutely. that is, that is the, uh, that is the catalyst to, to what I, do. I love that. That is, oh, I love that quote. <laughs> you can't have a testimony without going through a test. Yes. That is perfect. And I, I love how you mentioned at the beginning of your response, how, you know, you stopped not giving control to other people over yourself. And that's something that I know that I've struggled with for most of my life up until, you know, probably six, seven years ago. Um, I, you know, I always had that victim mentality. Everything was always happening to me. Everybody else was, was doing this to me, you know, and I never took full responsibility for my part in whatever I was going through. And what could I do differently? And why was I in this position? You know, what what else could I have done to improve my, my position or improve my circumstances? 
And it was so, it, it was a challenge, but it was so, so like there's, there's a freedom in that in actually taking control of your own life and your own circumstances and realizing that you're responsible for, for how you respond to whatever takes place, nobody else. And, and that if you're angry about something, that's, that's your response. You're choosing to do that. Nobody else can do that to you. It's how you choose to respond to, to things and just, you know, really overcoming that victim mentality. And like you said, you know, taking control of, of your life is so incredibly important. And, and I'm so glad that you shared that because I think, I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with is that victim mentality and why, why is this happening to me? And in my experience, you know, when you take back that power and you take responsibility, everything changes. And it, it truly is a, a feeling that can't quite be explained. You know, you, we, we live in a society that already has its, its thought processes, not all, right? but some <laughs> already has its thought processes in regards to stereotypes and, and different aspects like that. So if, if you indeed are one who, you know, chooses to not judge a book by its cover, then you will get a lovely, loyal and dedicated, committed and real individual, right? You'll be able to say that, this particular person is genuine, you know, like not many others I've met, right? Mm -hmm. However, if the stereotype is your perception is, is in another way, that I am an angry Black female or that I am a, you know, some of the words that we won't, we won't even share here, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to give you that. I'm going to prove something different, right? That is my overall goal. And you cannot do that if you're not secure in you, if you don't acquire self-esteem, self-love, self, you know, worth, you, you, you can't. And, and I, I share all the time that another aspect that individuals will have you believing is that, especially as women, that if you display self-esteem, self-worth and self-love, then you are selfish. Mm -hmm. and that's just not true. <laughs> it's not true. You can be selfless, right? And still provide those aspects. You actually, if you're including yourself in the equation of happiness, all of the happiness that you're providing to everyone else, if you include yourself in the equation, that's not selfish. You're actually being a better person and being able to contribute to a number of aspects that, you know, only are going to help you to soar. So important to include yourself in that. So Kiana, let's take a moment now and focus on your biggest triumph. Can you share what that was and what made it such a great triumph for you? Oh my. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I could be totally honest, I, I really don't feel like I've, I've made that yet. I have certainly had some, some huge triumphs along the way, but I really do feel that the most high has something bigger for me that I cannot even ma imagine, right? And so, of course, my triumphs are getting through being molested and raped, getting through domestic violence. And these are, these are terms, of course, that individuals such as ourselves are unfortunately not totally surprised by, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Having children, every one of my beautiful young adults and that's when I'll get to crying right <laughs> is when I start talking about them having them um them helping me to see what my first purpose was right my husband you know having a partner that truly believes in uh the fact that we are both important and that we are both just as valuable in in the sector of family and living, you know, obtaining the, the circle and the friends that I 
have an understanding which ones are truly friends and those who are just associates. And also, a lot of people, I guess, would say that triumphs are based on the degrees or the accolades that you have obtained along the way. I have uh, a couple of businesses, one, one that you mentioned and celebrate your worth. Um, I also have a business with my husband, which is Marquee Farms Clothing and Accessories. I've obtained a great deal at the institution that I work for. But to me, triumphs don't come in a monetary value. They don't come in a uh, in an accolade or something physical. It's the things that you don't see. And my biggest triumph, honestly, is continuing to survive and being able to provide individuals knowledge, being able to provide individuals examples, being the person that I wish to see. And that is, for, for me personally, that is my biggest triumph, is setting examples that are going to live here and I'm not. That, that's my <laughs> biggest triumph. It's an incredible triumph and a great testament to your character and the fact that you've gone through all of those challenging circumstances and have come out on top and have succeeded and helped so many people, I think is incredible and a a phenomenal triumph. So thank you for sharing that. So you know that as women, we juggle a multitude of different things. There's career, family, household responsibilities. Sometimes there's illnesses or caregiving. So how do you maintain a work-life balance? And what do you think that employers could do to be more supportive of that balance? So honestly, I'm still trying to obtain the the answers on a, <laughs> a true work-life balance. Um, <laughs> I I do think that women are the catalysts of the term. I I think that we have uh, in some ways been expected, forced into doing what we had to do, right? And so you you find a way by any means necessary. (laughs) But for me now, the older that I get, I do feel like I'm coming into my wisdom walker years. And with that, I, I... I know that it's important to to prioritize. And, you know, although I I certainly do love my career, I just don't, I don't think of it as a job. I I literally love what I do. And because of that, I don't, I don't feel an obligation or a, I don't feel like I have to time manage, you know, that to a degree. On the other side, though, I love my family. Um, when you talk about prioritizing, you understand what is most important, right? And so my family, my my community, those aspects, you know, that's how I, I do a work-life balance, right? Mm-hmm. Is, is I make sure that I'm taking the vacation time that's allotted to me, even though it's a challenge. Mm-hmm. I make sure um, I've learned through those wisdom years that I can't take two weeks. (laughs) I won't (laughs) mentally (laughs) be able to handle that, but I can take long weekends where I'm still in one part of the week and I come back in another part of the week. So for me mentally, that's what works. And I mean, long weekends, it might be (laughs) Wednesday from one week to Wednesday, the next week, but nonetheless, I'm still able to do what is necessary mentally so that I can truly detach from what, you know, what I need to do in terms of, you know, being present with my family during family vacations or my husband and I are about to celebrate our seventh wedding anniversary. Really looking forward to that. So just being, coming to know who you are and making sure that you are doing what is necessary and valuing those whom you proclaim are dearest and nearest to you, uh, while also fitting in there the things that make you fabulous, right? Outside of family, spiritual essence, it is just as important to me to be balanced 
by mind, body, and spirit in order to be the best me to tackle all of the, the work-life balance uh, <laughs> things that come to it. So in regards to what I would share with employers regarding work-life balance is just try to have a, a sense of women typically deal with so much outside of their place of business, right? Especially if they are choosing to be mothers, you know, that we provide with their assistance, but we provide life. And so being understanding and putting forth procedures and protocols that help individuals, like, unfortunately, we had COVID. But the one thing that, you know, really did heighten or enlighten individuals and companies is the fact that you were forced into remote work. So you proved, you had an opportunity to prove that you can sustain even if you're not present, right? So maybe this was the universe's way of helping society understand that work-life balance is attainable in terms of remote work. And to help with women and work-life balance, maybe those employers could look at the possibility of some type of protocols, benefits that would help those instead of utilizing sick or vacation or personal time. Mm -hmm. Maybe things can be instituted where they can still take care of their children and still provide you a service in terms of uh, remote work. So just being understanding for companies and we all, whether you are a woman or a male, we all came from a woman. So it's important that individuals try to remember that when they are creating policies and procedures around their, their companies and work-life balance. Thank you so much for that. And, and that flexibility, like you mentioned, with the, the remote work is absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> I, I, and I, the position that I'm currently in is, is currently 100% remote, and it was you know, probably 95% remote even before the pandemic. And it's fantastic. Like there's, there's so much less stress because I'm not worried about traffic or, you know, if there's an accident on my way to work and getting there on time. And it just, it, it, it's so nice to have that flexibility. So if I have a doctor's appointment, I don't have to take vacation time. I can adjust my schedule and work later. Or if I want to go out for lunch with a friend, I can do that in the afternoon. My work is, is I'm very fortunate that it's set up in a way that as long as you get it done, it doesn't matter. You know, I don't have to be in my seat in front of my computer nine to five. You know, if I'm working a couple hours in the morning and then I work, you know, the remainder of my shift in the evening, that's perfectly fine. And it's such it's such a, a blessing, really, to have that flexibility and definitely helps to increase job satisfaction <laughs> immensely <laughs> because it, it, it takes away that stress. Mm -hmm. And and just to, to have that flexibility is phenomenal. So I, I absolutely agree with, with that statement. So Kiana, as a woman, how would you define success for yourself? And do you have any tips or habits that you've used to help you to be successful or to feel successful? Yes. So I think you have to be successful to, to me is that you have to be willing to prepare the next generations. And so um, you can acquire many different awards and uh, recognitions and, and, and things to that degree. But if you are not sewing it back into, you know, whether it's your, your children or the, <laughs> because we, we had so many um, children that they had best friends. So we obtained additional children, right? <laughs> and I work at a college. So, you know, my children, you know, number just continues to go up and up and up. Mm -hmm. But you really have to be willing to sow into them, right? Because 
if, if they don't have anyone who is providing them, mentoring them, then they're going to be lost. And, and what is going to continue on the legacy? If you feel like you've accomplished a grand, you know, a grand amount of, of things that we, that we just talked about, then it's just as important for you to prepare that next generation. So to me, success looks like not being scared to sow into others. You know, if I feel like I'm wearing a crown, I want to be able to take that crown off of me and put it on as many individuals as I possibly can before I leave here. And that's, that, that's what it is for me. It's a wonderful definition of success. Thank you for sharing that. So Kiana, take a moment now and reflect on something that you wish you would have known sooner in life and share that with us. I would have to say that I wish I would have known that it's okay to be me, right? So despite my obstacles, you know, even my triumphs, that at the end of the day, what's most important is that it's okay to be me. So, and each of us have a significant calling or, or path or purpose. And maybe if I would have known what my purpose was a long time ago, I might not have, I'm not going to say wasted time because as I already mentioned, there's, there's no testimonies without tests. And so not wasted time, but I would have been able to probably accomplish and reach many, you know, more than what I'm able to do at half the, the age of the years that they say that you're going to be, <laughs> you're going to be in existence. <laughs> so I would have had more time had I, had I known what I know now, I would have had more time to impact, empower, you know, and uplift. And so that is something that I wish. Thank you for sharing that. So Kiana, what advice would you give to young women that are just beginning their careers or perhaps women that are thinking about changing careers? So beginning your careers, remember that what you put out into the universe, you receive back, right? And so if you are working on looking at oneself and always focused on how you can be the best you, right, without throwing other people under the bus and being mindful that every action has a consequence. So you get to choose whether or not the action that you're outputting is going to receive a good consequence or a bad consequence. That's something that you need to know. It it doesn't matter how much money you are able to go out and obtain, although I'm not telling you not to go for it, right? Go for it. Do, Do you but understand that no amount of money will equate to what you receive back in terms of what you sow into the universe. Um, so that's what I would say to those who are going into going into careers. Those who are, what was the second part of that question? Uh, women who might be thinking of changing careers. Women who might be thinking of changing careers, um, it would be the same answer. It would just be that it would just adjust to the fact that, you know, be honest with yourself in regards to why you are changing the careers. And if there's anything that you personally could do to, to change an outcome, then do that first right, before you change in a career and believe that it's going, that the circumstances are going to change. Evaluate oneself first, uh, but still understand that what you put out into the universe, you receive back uh, and try to work on, on putting good. And like I said, my philosophy has been and will always be, be the example that you wish to see. Thank you. Excellent, excellent words of advice. So Kiana, if somebody wanted to get in contact with you, how would they get in touch with you? Oh my. Okay. Well, I do these little things. Um, I have a, a name. It's a uh, Serena Key and I have a YouTube page. I have a Facebook. So it's Kiana. Uh, so happy to be farms and um, on Facebook. 
It's Serena Key on YouTube. It's Kiana McIntosh Farms at Lorain County Community College. If you're looking to um, further your career or your education, by all means, look me up. And, you know, I, I try to be as uh, instrumental in my community as possible. I am with a, a board uh, under the Community Foundation uh, board, and um, I am on the African American Affiliated Fund, where we try to empower those who, who are from the African descent. And then we, I'm also involved with Sisters to Heart, which is an organization that conducts women's conferences annually, and we have one coming up. We typically do it around October, November, but. I'm around, baby. <laughs> I mean, all you all you have to do is just is just uh, you know, if you are in the Northeast Ohio region, and um, and even if you're not, if you are on social media, if you just search for Kiana McIntosh Farms, uh, you will see something. That is um, that we're trying to do collectively or individually to uplift, empower, and impact. That that's what it's about for me. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that, Kiana. It has been an absolute joy to speak with you. Thank you again so much for taking the time for this interview. Thank you. It has really, really been a pleasure. Like I said, I am totally humbled. Shout out to my boo boo. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I am just really pleased to be here and be thought of in such a fabulous way. And really a shout out to all of the fabulous women who have been recognized here and to your organization. Y'all are doing a fabulous thing. Um, we need this in our community. And I'm just grateful that, that you thought of me. Well, thank you very much. On Technology Partners wants to thank you for joining us on this episode of Women's Stars. If you'd like to appear on a future podcast episode, or if you'd like to nominate a woman to be interviewed for Women's Stars, please email stars at ontechpartners.com. My name is Shanti Harkness. Until next time, have a great day. Thank you for joining us on today's journey. Remember, you are all Women's Stars. If you wish to learn more about our Women's Stars program or want to be a guest on our show, Contact us at stars at ontechpartners.com. And thank you to On Technology Partners for helping me make this program a reality. Remember, we at On Technology Partners want to help you protect your team from hackers. To learn more about our cybersecurity services, go to ontechnologypartners.com.